Today I want to take a look at how to draw a portrait with pastel pencils and I'll show you the process that I go through to complete one. So the main things I'm going to focus on while drawing this lady is particularly on her skin tones and her hair. In this drawing I'll be using the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils in the set of 60 and I'll be drawing it on Ingra paper. Now before we get started I've already put my outlines down on the paper. To do this I created a sketch on printer paper and then I transferred it onto my drawing paper which you can see me doing here. So I'm just covering the back of the paper with pastel and then I can draw back over the sketch on the front and that pushes that pastel through onto the drawing paper. And that's all the prep we need to do. Let's get started. So I always work my way through the same steps whenever I'm drawing a portrait with pastels. So I'd like to start off by putting down a base layer. What I'm focusing on here is putting down mid-tones. So for example, on the eyelids, I'm putting down this medium pink. And then on the skin around the eyelids, it's a mid-brown. And I say that I'm using a medium pressure for this. I don't want to press so lightly that you can't see it, but I don't want to press really, really hard either. Once I've done that, I can start adding in the lightest areas. So I'm just going to use a white pencil and literally just go over the top of the pastel on any area that is lighter than this mid-tone. And as you can see, when I put this over the top of the brown, for example, it doesn't look bright white. It looks like a lighter version of that brown. After that, I can go in with a darker color. So I'm picking a very dark brown and I can use this to mark in all of the very darkest parts. So for example, her eyebrows, lash line, her eyes are closed in this. So I just want to do the lash line at the bottom here. And also she's got some makeup on the outer corners of her eyes. So I just want to mark that in as well. And then I'm going to go through the same process for her forehead. So I'm starting off with this mid-brown again and covering the whole area. And then I can put in the white and mark in the lightest areas, which is just above her left eyebrow. And then also in the reference photo, she has a lot of hair coming down either side of her forehead. So I'm just going to roughly mark in the key most prominent pieces of hair. And then already I have a very rough template of the top of her face. So from here, what I start doing is I look at my reference, I compare it to my drawing, and I basically want to start going through and adding all of the colors that I can see I'm missing. So for example, on her forehead, particularly where that hair is, there's more of a reddish brown shadow. So I'm going to start using this burnt sienna and put it anywhere where I can see this color. From there, for example, I want to brighten up the eyelids. They need to be a bit more purple than I have at the moment. So I'm gonna add a hint of that there. And I'm just gonna keep working my way through until I'm pretty happy that I think I've got the vast majority of the colors that I can see in that reference. Now, as you can see at this point, it looks quite rough and it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing because it's not all blended together. So the next thing I like to do when I'm happy that I've built up a first base layer at this point is to take my blending tool and I just want to blend these areas together and it's going to smooth everything out. So I always start on the lightest areas and then blend my way into the darker areas because I don't want to be blending the dark into the light. It'll make the light less bright. So this is not only smoothing this out, but it's also pushing that pastel into the paper so that then we're able to layer more pastel on top of this. So then I can start once again, adding more colors over the top. I'm also going to deepen down the darkest areas like her lash line and maybe adding a few more pinky tones in as well. So once I've gone through and built up some more colors, I can blend this again. And as you can see, by the time that I've built up the second layer, it's all looking much smoother. So I'm going to do exactly the same for the bottom half of her face. Once again, starting with the first layer and using this same base mid-tone brown and then adding in the lights and darks and maybe some pink and red as I need it. You'll notice once again that I'm working in two layers at this point. So putting down the first very rough layer, blending it, and then I can adjust it from there. And so by the time that I've done that quite quickly, I have built up something that does look like a face. So the next thing I want to do is start building up the mouth as well, because I've been working around that up until this point. So the main color I can see in her lips is a purple. I'm going to start with a base of purple. And this once again is my mid-tone, but it is more of a purple pink. So I will add a little bit of the pink in here as well. And then I can start adding in some white to brighten up the lighter areas. I also want to add in a darker color down the middle in between her lips and then I can give that a blend and that is my first layer on these lips. 
Now at this point, I want to start adding in some details on her face. I can also look at if there's any other color adjustments that I want to do. Now I'm looking at her face as a whole, it'll be a little bit easier to see what's missing. So for example, I'm gonna use a cool gray to add some cool tones underneath her eyes. You do find that generally around the eyes is quite cool because the skin around there is quite thin. And I'm also going to add some warmer grays around the skin on her forehead and on her eyebrow. Beyond that, I'm gonna use a variety of maybe some ivory or there's a little bit of yellow between her eyebrows as well. The main other areas that I need to be ensuring I add detail to is her nostrils, her eyelashes, and also her lips. At the moment, I've got no texture on her lips. So let's draw her lips first. And I'm beginning by once again, redefining the light areas, putting more of this white on here. Then I can go back in with this purple pencil. And I just want to be making little lines going through this area of light. So as you can see here, I'm making little flicks, but I'm not doing these all in a perfectly straight line. Around the center on the bottom lip, I am going almost straight down, but then towards the left of the lip, I'm going around and towards the edge of the lip. And to the right, I'm going around and towards the right, and that's gonna make the lips look a bit more rounded. On the eyelashes, the main thing I want to be doing is adding in a bit more light. So we've already built up a good base with all of the darker colors but to make them look a bit more detailed what I'm going to do is go in with the white pencil and I want to add a bit of a line along this area here and that's going to separate the lashes from it looks like she's wearing some eyeliner and also particularly towards the left hand side on the left eye I want to add some flicks of the pencil going along the eyelashes because there are a few here that are catching the light and then I can go over the top of that once again with the dark sepia is the color that I've been using just to blend these white areas into the eyelashes a bit more. So I still want these pencil marks to be there. I just don't want them to be really stark white. Okay, so once I've built up the face, I can move on to the neck or any other areas of skin. And I'm gonna work my way through this in exactly the same way. So starting with a mid-tone base layer, and then I can add on top of that any of the very prominent darks or lights. I can build that up a little bit, give it a blend, and then start adjusting this until it gets to the color that I would like. If you want to see this drawing in more detail, I do now have pastel pencil tutorials available on my Patreon. You'll find really in-depth tutorials as well as the real-time footage for this drawing and other pastel color pencil and graphite drawings. And if you'd like to see what my Patreon videos are like, I do have a free taster video when you sign up to my newsletter. Check out the link in the description. Okay, so that's all of her skin built up. Let's talk a little bit about her hair and how I go about drawing very curly hair like this. So the first thing I want to do is have a look at the colors that I can actually see in the reference. So here, particularly on the right hand side of the picture, there's a almost pinky purpley tone where the light hits the hair. So I want to begin by building up that tone. So I'm going to start with this quite dark purple and I literally just want to put a base layer all over. Now what I'm doing here is I'm not worrying about any details. I'm just making these big circles and I'm putting them roughly in the main shape of her hair. There is no precision going on here. But then once I've done that, I think that the pinky purpley tone that I can see in the reference doesn't exactly match the color that I have. So I'm gonna brighten it up and use this pink as well. And I'm once again going over the top of this with these big circles in exactly the same way as you saw me do before. I'm gonna add a little hint of purple on the left-hand side, and then I can start putting in some browns. So I'm starting off with this reddish brown and that's gonna play very nicely with the pink. And I'm once again putting this down with these large circular motions. That said, when I get towards the edge of the hair though, I am adding a few stray curls around here because I don't want there to be a really abrupt end at the edge of the hair. So I'm only going to put this brown on the right hand side of her head, although I am also going to put a tiny bit down in the bottom left just because I can see a hint of it down there as well. And then I can move on to a darker brown. And I can put that on top of all of the areas that I put the last brown. Although with this brown, I am also going to roughly map out the curls on her forehead. So I'm gonna keep gradually working my way darker, working through all of these different browns until I get all the way to my darkest color, which is going to be the dark sepia. 
And throughout this, I'm working in the same way. So just working in these random circular motions, quite big circular motions. But I will also put some little stray hairs over the left hand side as well. Once I've built up all of the layers, what I want to do is blend this all together. So I just use a cotton bud when I'm doing hair like this because I do want it to look as soft as possible. I find that when I blend with a cotton bud, it looks a bit softer than when I blend with the blending tool. So that has built up the vast majority of her hair and as you can see, it is all nicely blended together but you can still see some of those circular motions that I created. So it's giving a little bit of texture to her hair. So what I now want to do is start adding in some details. So I'm gonna begin by making any areas darker that I need to, and I am actually going to use black for this, but I'm not gonna go straight to the black. I'm gonna start off by putting down some of this very dark blue, and then I'll put the black on top of that. And by doing that, it's going to give the black some more depth. I can then build up a few more of the browns and give it a blend. So then the last thing that I do when I'm drawing a portrait is I want to look for any final details. So for example here I want to be adding in her earrings. At the moment I've just kind of left lines where they should be. So I want to put those in. I also want to deepen down the hair either side of her face one more time. And where I drew her neck, her chin's kind of lost definition. So I'm going to redefine that. And then the absolute last thing that I always do is add in the baby hairs. So as you can see here, I'm making little flicks coming out from some of the curls that I already put around the edge. And that just adds a little bit of final detail. All right, and that is it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and drop a comment below. And as always, happy drawing guys. I'll see you in the next one.